Hello, my name is Julie Webb and I'm a nutritional therapist here at The Haven. After a diagnosis of breast cancer, many women start to analyse their existing diet and start to explore the role that food may play in their recovery and their general well-being. Your nutritional status has a huge impact on the strength of your immune system, your hormone functioning, your mood and your energy levels. Here at The Haven, we aim to make things as easy and as practical as possible. We've read all of the research for you to help us produce our guidelines so that you can improve your nutritional status. The advice we've produced is not only suitable but is actually recommended for the whole family. Of course, you may need to adapt the guidelines according to your specific needs. You may even need to phone us or visit us to have them tailored specifically for you. During treatment, you may find that your appetite varies and you may experience cravings if your energy levels drop. But try and eat just three meals a day. If you can eat the right kind of meal, you should find that you won't get hungry between. If you do need to have a snack, try and focus on something protein-based, some nuts and seeds, or some hummus and some oat cakes, or perhaps a green smoothie. So I'm going to talk you through the Haven Healthy Eating Plate. And you should try and follow this method of eating for each of your three meals a day. Try to think of the plate in two halves. The first half of the plate is what we call the cleansing side of the plate. And this is fruit and vegetables. So you should aim to eat half a plate of fruit and veg at each of your three meals. This means that over the course of the day, you should be eating about eight to 10 portions of fruit and veg a day, with a portion being approximately 80 grams. Now, of course, although fruit is full of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, it is also full of uh, natural sugar, fructose. So this means that you do need to moderate your intake of fruit to perhaps about two to three portions a day. Now, in terms of which fruits and vegetables to choose, the best thing to think about is just to include a rainbow of colour, preferably throughout the day. The different antioxidants are represented by the different colours, so just try and choose a really good variety. Try and choose a portion of green leafy vegetables every day, something like some Swiss chard or some spring greens, and also try and include something from the cruciferous family, so maybe some broccoli, some cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage or watercress. Now the reason we suggest that you eat this many vegetables is not just because of the high levels of fibre that it's going to give you, but also because of the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and phytonutrients. So really think about the quality of the produce that you're choosing. It is better if you can choose with the seasons so that you'll have more nutrients in them. If your budget permits, it's better if you can choose organic produce to try and avoid the pesticides. Otherwise, it's really important that you just give everything a really good wash before you eat it. As well as choosing the best quality produce, really think about trying to preserve the nutrients in your fruits and vegetables in your cooking methods. So it's a good idea if you can have some of it raw, perhaps in juices or smoothies or salads. And then think about just cooking at low temperatures for everything else. So maybe lightly sautéing or steaming or roasting at low temperatures. Eating this amount of fruit and vegetables a day doesn't need to be daunting. Most people tend to have their fruit at breakfast, people prefer to have something sweet then, which means at lunchtime you might want to have some crudite, just some chopped vegetables, or perhaps a salad, or some vegetable soup. And then at dinner, always serve three vegetables on the plate. Now the other half of the plate is what we call the feeding side of the plate, because this is where you're going to get the bulk of your calories from. This half of the plate is divided into three sections. So the first of these sections is the complex carbohydrates. So here we're thinking about the starches. So we've got oats, rice, rye, barley, quinoa, wheat, and the various forms of wheat, such as bread and pasta and crackers. And we've got quinoa as well. There are two things to think about when you're choosing your carbohydrates. The first is the quality. So really we're thinking about choosing wholemeal and whole grain and unrefined, unprocessed. So wholemeal bread, brown pasta, brown rice. The second thing to think about is your portion size. Even when it's whole grain and unrefined, you're still thinking about only having about a cupped handful. This doesn't mean you can never have a croissant again or more white rice, but most of the time, if you can just choose the whole grain versions, it will keep your blood sugar better balanced. The next section, which is where most of the controversy lies, is protein. It's really important that protein is included in each of the three meals. Having the protein there helps to balance out the blood sugar effects of the carbohydrates. Protein also provides the essential amino acids for building the blood, building immune cells and helping the liver in detoxification. So the first protein you can choose from is red meat. It is a great source of zinc, 
iron and vitamins and this can be enjoyed on the menu a couple of times a week. And then we've got game such as venison, deer and rabbit. This is a really lean and highly nutritious form of protein and can also be enjoyed a couple of times a week. And then we've got poultry, so chicken and turkey. Now this does tend to be the most intensively farmed animal, so if budget does permit, here it is better if you can choose organic and preferably free range. Now although this can be expensive, it is cheaper if you choose the whole bird and actually use every bit of the bird, so make some stock out of the bones. It's a really rich source of glycine, which is really supportive for the digestive system and helps the liver with detoxification. Now processed meat, such as ham and salami, should really be a treat rather than a regular part of the diet. Now fish is also a great source of protein, and all fish can be included in the diet, but it's the oily fish that are really important to include because of the anti-inflammatory effects of the omega-3 oils included in them. So we're thinking about mackerel, herrings, pilchards, sardines. And here it's okay to include tin fish, especially the sardines, because the bones go so soft that they're a really great source of calcium. And then we've got pulses. These are also a great and very affordable form of protein. So we've got the lentils, which don't need any soaking, so they can just be cooked in about 20 minutes. And then all the different pulses are there to be enjoyed. So the black-eyed beans, haricot beans, butter beans. And you can use tins here as well. Now my favourite form of protein has to be eggs. Not only are they affordable, but they're very quick to prepare. It's now been proven that eggs do not raise cholesterol, so you really can eat as many as you like. And if you're choosing eggs to be your protein portion, you need to eat two. It's better if you can choose free range and organic again if possible. And then we've got dairy, probably the most controversial protein. Dairy is probably the category that causes the most concern. It is not a necessary part of the diet, but unless you have a sensitivity to dairy or a lactose intolerance, it can certainly be enjoyed and is a great source of protein. However, as a food that is naturally high in hormones, if you would still like to enjoy some milk, cream, natural yogurt, cheese or butter, it is safe to do so in moderation, limiting yourself to about 300 millilitres a day. Nuts and seeds can be really helpful for topping up the protein content of a meal, especially at breakfast or if you're a vegetarian. Try and choose unsalted and unroasted and limit your intake to about three tablespoons a day because although nuts are very healthy, they do contain omega-6 fatty acids, which can be quite inflammatory. Now the last protein to talk about is soya and this can be particularly useful for vegetarians and vegan. Now when choosing soya, it is best if you can choose organic and non-genetically modified. Also, it's better if you can choose the traditional forms of soya, like tofu, tempeh, miso. The fermenting process of these forms makes it much easier to digest. Soy in the diet does not cause any problems in terms of the plant estrogens because these are biologically much weaker than human estrogen. The final food category that should be on your plate at every meal is fat. You should try and include the equivalent of about two tablespoons of fat at every meal. And this won't make you fat. In fact, it will help you feel satisfied and reduce your cravings. It's the type of fat that's really important. We now know it's safe to have some of your fats coming from what's called the saturated fats. So butter, coconut fat, palm oil, and animal fat. But this shouldn't be your only sources of fat. What's really important is that you try to include the omegas into every meal. So the first one to think about is omega-9. Now this we find mainly in olive oil and avocados. It is safe to lightly fry and roast in olive oil at low temperatures, but it is even more beneficial to have it raw. So use it to dress your salads. Now it's really important you include the essential fatty acids in your diet as well. The first of these is omega-6. Now this we find in the nuts and seeds. So you can eat about three tablespoons of these a day, preferably unroasted and unsalted. But we do not recommend cooking with the oils from these nuts and seeds because the high omega-6 fatty acids can be very susceptible to damage from heat and light. If, like me, you enjoy sesame oil, you can use this to dress your stir fries at the table. The most important fat to include in the diet is the omega-3 fatty acids. These have a really powerful anti-inflammatory effect on the body. Here we're thinking about oily fish such as mackerel, herrings, pilchards and sardines. You should try and include these in your diet three times a week because of their powerful anti-inflammatory effects. Tinned versions of fish is good to eat 
and it's also safe to include some smoked versions of fish as well. If you do not eat oily fish, then I would recommend that you supplement your diet daily with a good quality fish oil or cod liver oil capsule. You can also find omega-3 fatty acids in green leafy veg and flax seeds. What can happen with dietary advice is that we tend to focus on particular foods. The way we teach nutrition at the Haven is to think about how to feed the body throughout the course of the day. I like to focus on balancing blood sugar. This way we can ensure consistent energy levels throughout the day. So let me explain how it works. We've got about one to two teaspoons worth of sugar in our blood at any one time. When we eat something containing carbohydrate, such as bread, rice, pasta, fruit or milk, our blood sugars will rise after that food has been digested. Our bodies will then produce the hormone insulin to drive that sugar from the blood into the cells. Now when we eat something containing refined carbohydrates, our blood sugar rises much more quickly, or if we eat too much carbohydrate. And then what happens is we produce too much insulin and it drives our sugar down very fast. Most people experience this about 11 o'clock or 4 o'clock as dips in energy and cravings. And what we turn to at those times is usually something sweet and refined, maybe coffee, maybe some chocolate or a biscuit. And all this does is further perpetuate the blood sugar cycle. If you follow the Haven plate, you can help avoid those lulls in energy when we turn to those snacky foods. And it will help you choose foods with a much higher nutritional content. Don't forget the importance of staying hydrated. It's really important to keep your fluid intakes up, especially during treatment, to help avoid hot flushes, stress and fatigue. Try and aim to drink about one and a half to two litres of water a day, which can include herbal teas. Tea and coffee can be enjoyed in moderation, and of course green tea, which is well known for its immune boosting effects. Just be aware that it does contain caffeine, so if you are sensitive to caffeine, it may be worth limiting your intake later in the day. We do not recommend that you drink any alcohol during your treatment programme, particularly during chemotherapy. It can cause dehydration, fatigue, hot flushes and increase oestrogen levels, particularly if you're postmenopausal. Of course, after your treatment's over, alcohol can be enjoyed on special occasions in moderation. All of the advice I've talked about are available on our website and in our Haven's Guide to Healthy Eating. But it's important to be flexible. The guidelines I've talked about are the ideal way of eating and it's important that you make changes at your own pace and don't be afraid to ask other people for help. And we also have our Haven in Your Kitchen cookbook, which is a compilation of recipes from all the nutritionists at the different havens. I really recommend this. I really hope you found this information helpful and a good place to start. But if you would like more information, please contact one of the nutritionists at the Haven. And in the meantime, enjoy your food and I wish you good health.